Telecom Malaysia has terminated the share subscription agreement with Digital National, effective immediately, one week after its peer, Cellcom DG, announced a similar decision. In a statement, TM said the long-stop date to fulfil all conditions precedent in the SSA for the subscription of a 20% equity stake in DNB had lapsed. Nonetheless, TM says it remains committed to playing an active role in the 5G implementation as its 5G wholesale access agreement with DNB remains intact, leveraging on its nationwide fibre infrastructure, extensive digital platforms and rollout experience. The termination of the agreements came after communication and Digital Minister Fami Fazel announced on May 3rd that the government has decided to tweak the 5G single wholesale network model and allow a second 5G wholesale network to be established once DNB achieves 80% coverage of the populated areas by end 2023. TM adds that the termination of the SSA is not expected to have any significant effect on the group's earnings earnings, net assets and gearing for FY 2023. To recap, last October, TM along with Cellcom DG and YTL Communications announced that they will collectively take up a 65% stake in DNB, while its peers Maxis and U-Mobile decided to opt out. Petronas Dagangan will continue to embark on an aggressive expansion of its convenience business, even though profit for the segment dropped markedly year-on-year for FY 2022. MD and CEO Azrul Osman Rani said the decrease was to be expected given that the convenience segment was still in early stages of development. For FY 2022, Pet Dag's convenience or non-fuel segment contributed 16.12 million or 1.4% of its operating profit of 1.15 billion ringgit. Azrul is confident that as the convenience segment continues to expand, it will provide a higher revenue share. He explains that a Cafe Masura outlet starts to break even around nine months, and for those that don't break even, they can then be moved to a better location and get more data. Meanwhile, according to COO Khalil Jafri Mohamed Muri, PetDag has 53 Cafe Masura outlets at present, from 40 at end 2022. Khalil indicates that it is possible for the number to eventually double. However, Azrul assures that PetDag is not abandoning its commercial and retail segments as it believes that the core businesses will remain relevant for many years to come. On PetDag's prospects for FY 2023, Azrul says the group is cautious but optimistic in view of Malaysia's forecast economic growth, higher year-on-year tourist arrivals, inelastic fuel consumption and because it had also put risk mitigation plans in place. Lotte Chemical Titan Holdings Unit, Lotte Chemical Titan Malaysia, has signed a non-legally binding memorandum of understanding with British biotech company Polymateria to commercialise Resin Plus, a biodegradable resin. LCT President and CEO Pak Hyun Chun explains that this five-year partnership forms part of the group's corporate vision to manage climate change issues, minimise the environmental impact of its business operations and provide sustainable solutions for its customers. He adds that as the largest producer of polyolefins in Southeast Asia, LCT has the responsibility to pay special attention to environmental issues, particularly reducing the carbon footprint. Park says that zero change or input is required to package the new resin plus into the manufacturing stage for the creation of polyolefins, adding that the group will introduce this new speciality product to clients soon. Meanwhile, Polymateria CEO Niall Dunn says the new material creates no microplastics and decomposes within in two years. Dunn explains that in Malaysia with LCT, they are focused on the downstream to the packaging converter and also the brand so that it is communicated to consumers in the right way. He says that Polymateria is also strengthening its position in the Malaysian market by actively testing its products. Former Malaysia Automotive Robotics and Internet of Things Institute or MARI CEO Datuk Muhammad Madani Shahari claimed trial at the session's court on Wednesday for money laundering amounting to 4 million ringgit. Madani is alleged to have committed the offences between July 2021 and February 2022. Madani pleaded not guilty when the nine charges were read out to him before session court judge Rosila Saleh. For the first three charges, Madani had allegedly used 3.25 million from 
from illegal proceeds to purchase Islamic Redeemable Preference Shares Class F and to pay legal fees to law firm Messrs Norizan and Associates. Madani is charged under Section 41 b of the Anti-Money Laundering, Anti-Terrorism Financing and Proceeds of Unlawful Activities Act 2001 or AMLA. As for the remaining six charges, Madani had allegedly given instructions via a letter of instruction to pay 750000 in different transactions to two individuals, a law firm and a company. Deputy Public Prosecutor Muhammad Asraf Muhammad Akhir requested that the court use the same 300,000 ringgit bail which was paid when Madani was charged here previously as his bail condition. The court agreed to it. Asraf also informed Rosila that they intend to file an application to transfer the case to the Kuala Lumpur court so that this case can be heard simultaneously with other graft cases he is facing. Rosila set June 9th for case mention. To recap, on May 8th, Madani claimed trial at the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court for soliciting a 5 million ringgit bribe from an individual two years ago. Prior to this, Madani was charged at the Shah Alam Sessions Court last month with receiving a 5 million ringgit bribe from another individual. This brings Madani's charges to a total of 11 so far. Italy-based Generali Group, one of the largest global insurance providers, aims to narrow the insurance gap for the underserved market in the country through its integrated unified brand, Generali Malaysia. Generali Malaysia was recently integrated following the acquisition of a controlling majority stake in Afin Bank's general insurance arm, AXA Afin General Insurance, and a 100% purchase of MPI Generali Insurance from its JV partner, Multipurpose Capital Holdings. Generali Insurance Malaysia CEO, and country head Fabrice Bernard said in his keynote speech that the group is here to stay and that its ambitions lay beyond the economic frontier. He says that one of its key priorities is to narrow the insurance gap for the underserved market by offering inclusive products and innovative distribution methods. Bernard notes that in Malaysia, not one insurance provider has been successful in the strategy for serving the B40 group, which he says is why there has been low penetration in the market. However, he says Generali Malaysia has not finalised its strategy in this regard. In 2022, Generali Malaysia registered $2.3 billion in gross written premium for general insurance segment, while its life insurance saw more than $6 billion in annualised premium equivalent. Generali Malaysia also expects its acquisition of AAGI to further expand its collaboration with the bank in the retail and small and medium enterprises segments. On April 1st, Generali Asia, a subsidiary of Generali Group, completed the M&A of AAGI at a value of $1.29 billion, making it one of the largest M&A transactions in Malaysia in recent years. Generali Malaysia currently holds a 70% stake in AAGI, while Afin controls the remaining 30% of the enlarged insurance company. <music> 